What we're going to build today is a, a uh, medium-sized game trap, and what I'm thinking is something 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 that will target like a, a badger or a skunk or a porcupine or a coyote, something that size. And what I visualize is just a wooden timber box dug into the ground, probably two and a half feet deep, two feet wide, maybe three feet long, sort of a green wood type of lid that, that's heavy enough that when it falls, uh, it locks the animal in place, keeps the animal alive till you can get up here and harvest it. Okay, can you jump over here? Yeah. Ready? My turn? Yeah. Your turn. Okay, ready? Together. One, two, three. Good jump. Good jump, River Jude. Wow. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, River Jude. So now I've got the ground nice and level, I can start installing my timbers. I'm just going to save that sod over there so I can build this ramp that I visualize in my head that leads up into it so that when the animal goes in, it falls in. It's got to really work hard, get up on its hind legs to get out. Okay, as you can see where River Jude is sitting, we have all of our material harvested. Fell the trees, clean them up, process them, bucked them down, they're good to go. And that's the, that, that'll be the building material for the walls of the actual trap. I've got it roughed in here. I'll just give you a quick look here. This is sort of what I visualize for the size of the trap. So it's about two feet wide in, in, on the inside and about three feet long. And then I'm just going to notch these timbers into place, build it up to two to three feet. Ideally what I want is I want something high enough so that when the animal's in there, you know, whether it's a skunk or a porcupine or something like that, it can't, it can't get up off its hind legs and push open that roof and crawl out. <laughs> Thank you, River Jude. Oh, pass it over. Oh. Mm. So I'm going to start banging in those floorboards right now so the animal can't dig its way underneath the timbers and then we're going to tackle this roof. Is it sharp? 
Okay, watch out. Beep, 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 beep. Watch out, please. Okay, I'm just going to give you a quick look at how the actual lid to the trap turned out. It turned out pretty good. I used a few lashings here, and then on the mid uh, mid support here, I put a frame support here. So I just lashed that in place with some snare wire, and then at the front as well, just just to ensure that those notches don't come apart because there's a lot of stress on them. There's the inside of the trap. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up the, the trigger system. Just the simple logs, but two. I've got a spacer here to ensure that there's a space there so that it can pivot like that. And the premise is, is that the weight goes on top here and the weight holds it in place. I'm going to have two trip lines, one off each side of this spacer, like that, like that. The bait is going to be behind the trigger. When the animal jumps into the, into the actual um, box, which there will be a ramp up that I'm going to build still, jumps in the box, should hit those trip lines. When the trip lines are pulled, it'll pull that spacer and release the trigger, which is just a simple breakaway. Here. So there's the trigger system. I've got my spacer there, which which acts as part of my trip line as well. So when the animal comes on here, manipulates this. This is more or less a trigger, and it causes this to break away, drop. The lid will drop and lock the animal inside. And that's just how I have that set up there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this trap. Uh, just build my ramp and then clean up the area. Okay, so that's that's our uh, medium-sized game trap build. Uh, it was a fun build. It'd be interesting to see if it would work. It's my solution to to the fact that there are tons of elusive scavengers and predators in this area: coyotes, badgers, skunks, porcupines, things like that. Really hard to track and stalk, but there's tons tons of them out here. So this is my static solution to try and harvesting some of those some of those uh, animals, so that you can maintain a good calorie salary when you're out in the bush doing your survival stuff. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, bait this thing, and then first thing in the morning, come back, kill whatever's in it, waste the fur, throw the meat out. I just want to see if it works. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I would never do that. Um, this trap is highly illegal in Alberta. It's a $50,000 fine if someone even stumbles onto it. Uh, so as much as I would love to see this thing work, I'm not going to risk the, the fine, number one. And number two, I'm an avid outdoors person. I consider myself a steward of the land. I like to educate people on this, on, on the resources out here and not, not abuse them. So I'm going to go ahead and take this thing apart as much as it pains me. Uh, but if I were to bait it, I would use something like fish tailings, fish scraps, small rodents, uh, parts of birds, anything that I'm not using. I just throw in there, let those smells ferment. And then whether it takes a day or a week, uh, I'm confident that those smells would ferment uh, and draw the predators and draw the scavengers into the bait area, into the trap. And that I could actually bag a medium-sized game animal. Okay, all 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 that's all that I can really do now. All that's left is to prove that this thing really works.